the moon 1.3 seconds mars 12 and a half minutes neptune the farthest planet in the solar system takes four hours this will be the amount of time we need to reach these parts of the solar system thanks to an awesome new spaceship a starship that can travel at 99 percent the speed of light every astronomer's dream may have the opportunity to become a reality propellant we don't need it this is powered by a reactionless drive it would provide thrust to your rocket even when you're in the middle of space yes you heard that right and in its core a mind-blowing helical engine curious how stick around until the end of this video as we reveal how this ambitious idea actually works the space flight dilemma Ever since humans began to become curious about these glowing things in the sky, we immediately thought, how in the world can we get to them? Is there any way humanity can reach the stars? Our first successful attempt at getting closer to the stars came on October 4, 1957, when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite to orbit Earth. As years and decades have gone by, humans have ventured deeper and farther into our solar system. The Moon, Mars, Jupiter, and even the outermost planet, Neptune. We even traveled outside the solar system with the Voyager missions. Well, the problem is that the solar system is minuscule compared to the vastness of the whole universe. It took us about 35 years to reach the edge of our own solar system. 35 years! To reach other stars using the Voyager spacecrafts, it would take us a staggering 40,000 years. How many people ask themselves the question, should we just go ahead and develop a spaceship fast enough to reach other stars in our lifetime? Well, it's not that simple. There is a dilemma while creating a spaceship that can perform interstellar travel. It all starts with the third law of motion by the famed scientist and astronomer Sir Isaac Newton. The third law argues that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is also true when we are trying to travel into space. In order to go to the farthest locations in the universe, we also need tremendous amounts of energy. For now, the energy that we are consuming to propel spacecrafts in space are thrusters that eject gas in high speed from a nozzle. We all know that the more powerful the thrust, the faster the rocket can propel into space. But in a vacuum like in space, the spacecraft thrusters can alter the direction of the spacecraft, but it is hard to accelerate it to much higher speeds. These thrusters cannot magically accelerate a spacecraft to the speed we need to travel between stars, the speed of light. So, what now? How are we realizing our ambitions to be a species that can do interstellar travel? Well, one scientist has an idea in mind. A spaceship that does not require any fuel and can go 99% the speed of light. NASA engineers ambitious Helical engine. Humanity has dreamed of crossing the astronomical distances separating us from the ultimate extraterrestrial destinations. The nearest star from Earth is four light years away. So even with our fastest human-created spaceship that is traveling at 46 miles per second, 74 kilometers per second, it would take 4,000 years just to touch this star. While we have our ambition to become an interplanetary traveling species, we have not solved how to accelerate spacecrafts in space. The thrust coming from ejected gas particles from a spacecraft compiles with Newton's third law of motion. The exhaust conveys momentum downwards while the spaceship obtains momentum upwards. This is how our conventional rockets work. But normal rockets won't carry us to the stars. We need an extraordinary rocket with a thrust with no exhaust. A rocket propelled with reactionless drives. The concept of a reactionless drive is that there is no exhaust and nothing to carry momentum, but the spaceship is still able to create thrust and accumulate momentum, presumably due to some intricate internal process. This complicated internal process is a helical engine developed by NASA engineer David Burns. Spoiler alert, this helical engine defies the laws of physics. What precisely is a helical engine? Well, let's use Burns' thought experiment. Burns describes a box with a weight inside, threaded on a line with a spring at either end bouncing the weight back and forth. In a vacuum, such as space, the effect of this would be the bouncing of the box back and forth while the weight inside seeming to remain motionless. Let's take another easy example. Consider bouncing a ball inside a rocket. 
If you did that with a normal mass, when the ball hits the front of the rocket, the rocket would move forward a little, and when the ball hits the rear, the rocket would move back a bit. But that will not generate any thrust for the rocket, it will merely wobble. So how can we obtain enough thrust? Burns suggests modifying the weight using particles in a helical particle accelerator. So when the particles run up and down the helical particle accelerator, the rocket moves according to Newton's third law. But Burns also recommends accelerating the particles to near light speed when they are at the front of the rocket and slowing them down at the back. Einstein's theory of relativity indicates that particles flying near the speed of light have a higher mass than slower particles. Hence, they are heavier towards the front of the rocket than the back. Now, if we take our ball analogy, this would be as if your ball increases in mass before it hits the front of the rocket and loses mass before it touches the back. By Newton's principles, this implies the ball would provide the rocket with a stronger push forward than backward, so the rocket would accelerate. Sounds like science fiction, right? Now, the lingering issue is, is it actually possible to develop such an engine? Will we be able to utilize this in a way to travel to other stars? The Helical Engine Problem The notion of a spaceship not consuming any fuel while traveling at practically the speed of light is very nifty, but it breaks one crucial law of physics, the conservation of momentum. The law asserts that an isolated system with no momentum cannot gain momentum on its own, so a rocket ship in outer space with no momentum cannot just create momentum by somehow wiggling thrashing around, or bouncing around electromagnetic waves. No internal mechanism can produce thrust. For a spaceship to work in space, it must eject something. The Orion spacecraft, for example, uses a thruster which ejects particles of gas in high velocities out a rear nozzle. Orion, along with the ejected gas, conserves momentum and gives the spacecraft propulsion in space. Okay, now let's imagine that Burns spaceship can really break the laws of physics and circumvent the conservation of momentum. So what happens next? Well, there's another problem. For the ions to have accurate motions, the helical chamber would have to be very enormous, about 656 feet, 200 meters long, and 40 feet, 12 meters in diameter. And in order to acquire thrust, the engine would need to generate 165 megawatts of energy to create one newton of thrust. That 165 megawatts of energy is equal to the power that an entire power station is producing just to exert a force we apply to type on a keyboard. According to Burns, the engine itself would be able to reach 99% of the speed of light if you had enough time and power. Well, this is just his assumption. Burns has worked on his design in private and acknowledges that his approach is tremendously inefficient. He also notes that his work has not been checked by experts and that there may be errors in his math. We do not exactly have the blueprints for a fully operating space travel engine here. Even if it's a long shot, for Burns, it is an idea worth sharing with the world.